So, Bogart, you ever going to give me my chair back? Huh? Hmm? If I just pull it down a little. If I just pull... Aww. Hey there, real gamers! Retro Rob here, and welcome to the Gaming Apocalypse! I know there's a lot of channels you can watch out there in the wasteland, and I'm glad you're watching mine. So, today what are we doing? Well, we're going to take a look at my Super Nintendo collection. And I don't think I've done a video on this before. And you're going to love the reason why. And the reason why is I, I couldn't decide whether I should split up Super Famicom and Super Nintendo into two different collections or not like I do with my NES and Famicom collections. I have probably 40 games. <laughs> Why would I ever split them up? I don't know. But this debate has been going on with me for probably two years now. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. But I'm worried about giving you guys the highest quality videos possible. The highest. All right. I suppose. Let's get started with this. All right. First things first. There is my Famicom. Uh, this is the machine I play most Super Nintendo games on. On top of it is this Honey Bee adapter. This allows it to run American Super Nintendo games. Not much else to say about it. Next, we have this Super Famicom case, which... Yeah, let's get this thing open. There we go. There we go. I put my Super Nintendo in. One cool thing about this case is it has all this room for games. And underneath, there's a tray. And here's an interesting tip for you. I don't, I don't think I call it a pro tip. But as you can see, my Super Nintendo fits in it. These come out of Japan, and they are much cheaper than getting a hard case for the Super Nintendo in the U.S. I mean, much cheaper, less than $100. So, pretty nice case. I like it. Uh, that Super Nintendo right there is the one that I bring to shows and such. Because sometimes people like to mess with stuff. It doesn't happen real often, but when it does, <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of annoying. So... My rule is if you're bringing your kid to a retro show, if, if it's like a young kid especially, keep an eye on them. Don't let them just like start jamming cartridges into game systems. And the other thing is, you know, if you're if you're there and you're an adult or, you know, a young adult, don't, don't open people's uh, game systems up and poke around in them without asking them. That is super impolite. I had that happen too. I think it was the same year. Um, I very seldom had problems at gaming conventions, but for some reason two years ago, I just had all sorts of crazy stuff going on. But anyway, you know, be polite, think about other people. All right, let's go on. Nice little rant there for no reason. All right, so the first game we have here is Yoshi's Island, Super Famicom. And uh, just a great game. One of the best games on the Super Nintendo if you're a big fan of platformers. I think this was really the ultimate of the uh, Super Mario style games on this console. Just just great. Came out towards the end, so I wasn't actively using the Super Nintendo when this game came out, but boy, it was good. All right, so next we have this Pachinko Machine Controller and a three pack of Pachinko Machine games. I am not huge into Pachinko. I have a couple friends that own the real machines. They love them. It's okay, I, you know, it. It doesn't do it like pinball does for me, and I guess that's just fine. They're pretty much different things, but I don't know why everybody compares them. I guess they both have balls and they have glass over the top. I don't know. Anyway, Pachinko's vertical, like pinball, kind of, but no bumpers. Flippers. <coughs> ah, yeah. It's going to be one of those days, folks. Sorry about that. But anyway... This is actually kind of fun, and I've got a demonstration of the controller and the game uh, somewhere on this channel. I'll try to link it up if I remember to. Next, we have Super Bomberman 2. 
The Super Bomberman series was amazing. One of uh, the Super Nintendo's finest series. I really love these games. My wife and I used to play them for hours. It is great to have friends over and play this thing. Really fun little game. Uh, if you haven't seen a Bomberman game, and I can't imagine you couldn't have by now, uh, just check out a video on it and you'll be one over, I'm guessing, because it is just great. The last of my boxed Super Famicom games is Super Bowling, which is great. If you've never played this game, I put it up there with Neo Geo Bowling. I think they are just neck and neck for being some of the greatest bowling games ever made. I'm from Wisconsin. Of course I like bowling. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it has a couple different modes of play. It's really great to play with a friend. It is just a great multiplayer game. It's definitely the way to go. Was one of my uncle's favorite games. Hey, Future Rob here, kicking back a coffee, but it's early, oh, and I'm so tired. But what I wanted to tell you is that after recording this segment, I kind of went back and looked up the names of some of the games that I did not know the names for, so I wasn't constantly going, hey, you know, I don't know the name of this one. I don't know the name of this one. It got kind of tiring. Uh, so I did look up the names. Pardon me if I mispronounced some of them, because <laughs> I almost certainly did. Uh, also, you might get a little whiplash as I switch back and forth between scenes, uh, but I've tried to edit it pretty decently. Again, sorry about that, folks. Fair warning, there's a couple of games in here that I don't know the names of. So if you're into Japanese or, you know, can read it, let me know. This is Spanky's Quest by Natsume. And uh, I don't remember a whole lot about it, just that it's kind of a side-scrolling platforming thing. And it was kind of weird. It was a pretty cool little game, as I recall, though. I didn't think it was bad, but again, have not played it in so long, I cannot really remember. Uh, next, we have Gradius 3, which is amazing. Uh, just a really good side-scrolling shooter and uh, definitely well worth picking up. It is much cheaper to get it on the Japanese market than it is to get it on the American market, which is one of the reasons why I have Famicom stuff. Or Super Famicom stuff, sorry. Same with Famicom, though. World Heroes 2. I think I played it once. <laughs> I hear uh, fighter people tell me that it's pretty good, uh, but I'm not huge on fighters, so I don't know. Oh, look. It's Bomberman 2 again. How'd that happen? Oops. I bet it's not in my box. Hold on. <laughs> it is in my box. Therefore, I have two copies of Super Bomberman 2. So I guess that's a preview of what's going to be selling yeah, an auction soon. Hmm, I'll put that aside. I'll be darned. Had no idea. Super Mamataru Dintetsu is the name of this one, if I pronounced it properly. Uh, DX. And it's another kind of platformer-ish game uh, that I picked up who knows where. And uh, I, I don't remember a lot about it, to be honest. Again, another game I have not played a lot of, I'm sad to say. This is Ganbear Goman Kira Kira Dochu. Yet another name that I probably pronounced wrong. And it's kind of a platformy beat em up thingy. Again, that's another game I remember being actually fairly decent, but yeah. It's gonna get better when I get to the uh, North American releases. Don't worry. I think, oh, you know what? I remember. I think it was Stone Age Gamer. Might have been their site. Um, they had a deal where you buy a game and then they'd send you like a couple of freebies with it. And I think that's how I ended up getting a bunch of these. They just kind of sent them. They ask you what genre you'd like. And I say, ah, I'd like a side-scrolling shooter. And then they, they give you something completely different. Probably because they don't have that many of those. But anyway, here we go. Final Fight 2. Great freaking game. Uh, I have nothing bad to say about it. Another fighting game. Again, oh, look at it. It's got a little sticker on it. Very nice. All right, let's go on to the Super Nintendo box stuff. Thumbs up.
Comment and subscribe or I will go Skynet on your butt. Alright, so time for Super Nintendo Boxed Stuff. We'll just pretend that didn't try to fall over. First thing is, of course, Space Invaders. I got this one from Travis from uh, Guys Games and Beer. And, uh, yeah, I like, uh, I like my Space Invaders quite a bit. So, I uh, thank you very much for this one. And, uh, yeah, nice game. If you like your Space Invaders, you'll like it. Let's go on. We've got... Draken or Draken. Scrolling 3D World of Fantasy. Chemco. This one I got, I think somebody recommended that I pick it up. So I picked it up and then never got around to playing it. So I can't speak to it for myself. But it does look kind of interesting. So we'll see how this one turns out in the future. Eventually I plan to be doing a lot of these kinds of games on, um, on like live stream format or just recording some gameplay of them. Uh, next, this is another Travis one. Super Baseball Simulator 1000. That's right. This is uh, baseball from the uh, from the year 1000, uh, and so it's very primitive. <laughs> yeah, I know nothing about it. It's basically what I'm saying. The screenshots are weird too. Look at that. That's a lot of text-heavy screens for the Super Nintendo. It does say it has full editing for up to six teams and 432 players. That's pretty cool. Super Caesar's Palace. This is another one of my uncle's favorite games. I think he actually had the Super NES mouse for this. I'm just thinking, I could swear that I have a Super NES mouse somewhere, but I didn't find it for this video. I wonder where it is. Huh. All right, anyway, you got your blackjack, you got your slot machines, your video poker, and an explorable casino. A somewhat explorable casino. Again, my uncle spent a lot of time on this one. Oh, here we got, it actually says over here uh, what all games it has. It has video poker, blackjack, slot machines, roulette, craps, kino, red dog, whatever that is, horse racing, and some scratchers. Scratchers. So if you're a big fan of those uh, lottery tickets, I bet that's the same thing. I don't know. Next, we have... Primal Rage in World's Most Beat Up Box. I have no idea where I found this. Look at this. Save, save $4 at Six Flags Theme Park. That's crazy. There's one kind of bias. And there we go, Primal Rage. This is one of those games that almost all my friends were into and I never really got into. I, it's a cool idea and I like the concept. I just never got into the actual gameplay. I know, I know. What can I say? I'm like that. Next, we've got Tetris 2. Tetris hard with a bench. No, it's just Tetris 2. Again, I hear this one's pretty good. I actually do like to play Tetris every once in a while. So, you know, you can bust this one out and enjoy it. I don't know. I, You know what I really liked? I liked Tetris on the Apple II GS. So, uh, feel, to fr <laughs> feel free to... Send the uh, the hate mail to uh, to love at guysgamesandbeer.net. Yep. Next, we've got Top Gear. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we've got Top Gear, and it is a split screen racer, which is excellent. Uh, my wife is obnoxiously good at this game. I mean, to the to the point of making me want to throw controllers good at it. It just makes me sick. But anyway, here it is, Top Gear. And, uh, yeah, it's a good game. I'll probably play it on one of my Evercade uh, explorations uh, because they have it for the Evercade. Really good game, though. Next, we've got Off-Road, the Baja. I'm on a quest to get every version of Off-Road. Uh, and then not play it very often. <laughs> this box is a little beat up. I have a hard time getting um, decent Super Nintendo boxes. Most of the ones I get are pretty beat. Uh, not the best version of Off-Road, by the way. 
The, the best versions of off-road are top-down. Uh, this isn't terrible or anything, but definitely, if you're going to get off-road, if you want the true off-road experience, don't, don't do this one. Do uh, one of the other ones. Next, we have Little Medusa by Mega Cat Studios in box and in very good shape because, of course, it's a new release. And I've done a video on this one, so if you want to watch it, I'll put a link down below. If I forget to put the link down below, just remind me and I will. Um, anyway, this is a action puzzler by Mega Cat Studios. Uh, as always with these guys, I mean, just super high polish on the gameplay. They focus on gameplay over everything else and it shows in their games i think they do a really good job now we've got the jellico brawlers pack i hope i pronounced that right this one's by retro bit of course it's a re-release it's got rival turf brawl brothers the peacekeepers and tough enough and these are pretty cheap by the way uh you can get them for like less than 20 bucks delivered and they're fine i mean if you like all these games and you want a legitimate release of them here you go. This is R-Type 3 and Super R-Type for the Super Nintendo. And this is an official re-release. And this, this right here is the way that this kind of thing should be done. I have already unboxed and done a gameplay on this. So you can check that out. Another thing I got to link up. Um, but anyway, there's just... Just a stack of goodies in here. You got the cartridge. Uh, you've got <laughs> Yeah, there we go You got the little uh, yeah, I'm gonna open this aren't I all right fine You got the art book Sorry here. I'll try and there we go that better. There we go. You got you got your little uh, Drawing book. It's just blank by the way here. See, it's got the logo on the top, though. It's pretty nice. So I can do my own artwork. Or do my own writing, I suppose. And you got these little art cards. I'm not going to go through it too much. Um, there's some stickers and such. This is really the way you do this kind of thing, though. And then in the bottom... In the bottom... There is these awesome little R-type pins. Look at that. Nice, right? And that's the way to end the boxed stuff. And I'll just go on to my, uh, my free and easy stuff now. All right, meet the only fake in my collection. This is a reproduction cart. This is days before Christmas. This is not an authorized reproduction. This is totally a Chinese knockoff. And it's pretty good, actually, if you feel it. It feels like a regular Super Nintendo cartridge. The print quality on it is really quite good. Look at the label. Again, it's pretty decent other than, you see how it's kind of off the edge here? Wait, see that? And then the back is blank, so you can tell it's a fake. But I like to play this one around Christmas, so I'm not gonna pay like one zillion dollars for the thing. Man, it's one, it's one expensive game. All right, time for some real stuff. Here's The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Classic action RPG by Nintendo. Great freaking game. Love it. Next, we have Donkey Kong Country 2. Diddy Kong's Quest. Look at how beat up this sucker is. It's not the ugliest cartridge I have, believe it or not, but it is pretty ugly. It was a pick and save rental from Oak Creek, which is near me. There we go. <laughs> We've got Super Mario World, the classic original, one of the first games that I uh, picked up for the Super Nintendo, and one of the best in my opinion. Really, really good platformer. I think I finished it like two, three times. And I bet my wife's finished it a couple more. Next, we have Super Mario All-Stars, which is a, uh, you know, a reimagining of, well, not really a reimagining. I mean, it's just really a reskinning, isn't it, of the original Mario games? Really quite good. Here is Warlock, a game which I've been told multiple times is really good and I must play. In fact, I think... I think I have, 
Yeah, I have it for the uh, for the Genesis as well. Yes, yes, I do have it for the Genesis. It's by LJN. <laughs> it has that amazing seal of quality, so I don't know. I'm afraid to play it, but I have bought it multiple times now on multiple platforms. Lemmings. If you played Lemmings for the first time on a Super Nintendo, I am so sorry for you. Much better played on something like the Amiga. But you know what? It's not a bad version. It's pretty. It's got a lot going for it. NBA Jam, which is actually a legal requirement. If you own a Super Nintendo, you have to have a copy of NBA Jam. If you do not, you're in violation of Nintendo law. It's a basketball game if you don't know. <laughs> Um, next, we have Mortal Kombat 3. Uh, I hear this one's kind of a watered-down version. Again, another game I just picked up in a lot and never really played. I've never been huge on Mortal Kombat. I don't hate it, but it's never been my favorite. Unlike this one, Super Goals and Ghosts. If you ever finish this game, you are amazing. Because this is a really good game, and it's really, really hard. And it looks really good. True story, great graphics. Next, we have Vegas Stakes. Another one of those games that I just picked up while I was out and about in a lot. And uh, I don't think it's actually about tasty, tasty steaks. No, it's about bidding. I, I don't even know what all's in it. Is it, wait. No, the other one's Super Caesar's Palace, so. Which I like to call Super Caesar's Palace. <laughs> yeah, I'm a funny one. Next, we have The Lion King. Uh, another classic game for the Super Nintendo. Quite good. Platformy. Good stuff. No complaints about that one. Tetris Attack. I heard really good things about this in the day. Again, it's sitting in my collection and I never played it. That is really common with the Super Nintendo. I have a few games that I really like to play, and then the rest I don't, you know? Just how it is. I'm sure everybody's like that. How many games do you have in your collection that you haven't played? Come on, tell me down below. I bet most of you have well over 20. I bet you some of you are in the triple digits. Weapon Lord. He's the Lord of the Weapons. And again, I haven't played it. Look, I paid 12 bucks for this thing. And it's a blockbuster video from Sheboygan. Where they surf in the winter. True story. Ultraman. You know, is Ultraman and Spectreman the same thing? I used to watch a show that was just like this called Spectreman. Basically solar powered, as I recall. So if it gets dark out, <laughs> dead meat. He's on battery power. He had like the smallest battery ever. He probably should have gone to the Tesla people and asked him about that. But anyway, yeah, fighting game. I mean, yeah, it's a fighting game, isn't it? As I recall, it's not like a multiplayer fighting, but I beat him up. I don't even know what I'm talking about on that game, to be honest. Speaking of games I've never touched, Mario Paint. Yeah, I shouldn't say that. I played it at my uncle's house like once. He felt the same way I felt about it. But wait, look at that. It's Donkey Kong Country. This is a great freaking game. Played a long time, long, long time ago. And it's, you know, all the graphics in it are pre-rendered and then just thrown into the Super Nintendo to make it look 3D-ish. 3D-ish. But the platforming on this game is great. Really fun game to play. Highly recommend it. If you haven't played this yet, oh man, you are missing out. Go out right away and get that. Actually, it's in that um, uh, the little Super, the little tiny Super Nintendo they have. Meet Super Nintendo Frogger. Terrible. Not, mm, no, not a good game at all. I don't like the art direction. I don't really like the gameplay. It's a little, I don't know, man. I don't know what their thinking was when they made this game. Let's make it all frogger. 
<laughs> and the cutscenes. Oh man, I I'm gonna do a gameplay on this one one of these days. We'll take a look through that one, and you can uh, see for yourself the horror that is Super Nintendo Frogger. They could have done so much better. All right, done. <sighs> Super Mario Kart. Uh, one of the guys at Guys Games and Beer said this is one of his favorite uh, favorite racing games of all time. I can't blame him. Uh, this is a racing game at its heart. And uh, people are going to be going, eh, that's so obvious. No, no, it isn't because later on, Super Mario became, Super Mario Kart, sorry, became a gambling simulator. <laughs> and it just became... You know, whoever picks up the best stuff during the game, the best random stuff during the game wins. This was more focused on racing. <sighs> Send the hate mail to Drunken Larry at guysgamesandbeer.net. You can tell me all about how much you hated that. Uh, next, we have Total Carnage. Yeah, this game's amazing. I read about it in, uh, was it, it wasn't Game Informer. I think it was Electronic Games Magazine, and it had like a bunch of pictures of it, and it was so incredible, and it is just, it's just as good as the arcade version. Even better, because you don't have to put quarters in it. Wife and I used to play the heck out of this game. It's really good. If you have not played this one, another highly recommended game, and in really good condition, by the way, I was thinking about grabbing a box for it. Next, we have Mega Man X, which I know is an awesome game. I I know. I agree. I'm terrible at it, though. I am the worst Mega Man player on Earth. And uh, this isn't as bad. Like, this isn't as hard as the Nintendo version, the regular NES versions. But, jeez, man, it's hard. Um, fun game, though, nonetheless. Not, I'm not knocking it on the fun power. It's a good game. Next. Um, Super James Pond. Yet again, one of my favorite games. Uh, I originally got it on the Amiga. And then I picked it up later for the Super Nintendo. And this is the only version, in my opinion, that holds up to the Amiga version. And maybe... Maybe is a little bit better than it. Uh, you can get it on the Genesis, but it is not as good of a game. There is just way more going on graphically in Super James Pond than there is in the Genesis version of it. And it is a great game. I'm not saying don't get it for the Genesis if that's all you have. I'm saying this is the best version. If you have a choice between the two, get this one. Super Star Wars. Hey, look, Mom, it's a Star Wars game that has nothing to do with Star Wars. What the heck is going on in this game? Doesn't matter. Loved it. Loved it for the minute I put it into the Super Nintendo until the day I threw it in frustration. Because the game is hard as heck. It really is. It's not an easy game. But it is fun. So, another one that's, you know, if you're into Star Wars at all, pick it up. It originally clearly wasn't designed as a Star Wars game. But, uh, definitely... Definitely a fun platformer. Uh, next, because the first one wasn't enough, I got Super Empire Strikes Back. I haven't played much of this one yet. I think we played it a couple times uh, on the podcast. We, I think we actually played it on Guys Games of Beer. I think we actually did like a live play of this and all got our butts kicked. <laughs> but still, doesn't make it a bad game. It's a good game, and I enjoy it. So... Doesn't matter that I'm bad at it. Next we have Tetris and Dr. Mario. Because Dr. Mario is much like Tetris. I shouldn't say that. It's more of a color matcher than it is a shape squisher. <laughs> Feel free to use those professional terms for those types of games, by the way. Both games are quite good, though. This is a good mix. You know, don't buy them individually. Buy them together. Way to go. All right, and we have one game left. Oh, wow, I'm ending on Z. That's great. There we go. We've got Zool. And uh, I've been chastised before for my love of Zool. I understand. There's, you know, I I get it. It's not, it's not maybe the uh, 
the most polished of the platformers, but I like it a lot. Plus, uh, the Amiga version, anyway, has Choppa Chops in it. I don't think this one does, which is a great sucker for you guys. <laughs> for you guys that aren't, like... Well, they have them in the U.S. now, but I, they're in limited distribution. So, it, it's huge, and I think England it's huge in. And then everywhere else, you can kind of get it. But they're really good. If you haven't tried them, they're quite tasty. <laughs> so is the game. It's pretty inexpensive. And by the way, this is the worst copy of Zool ever. Look at it. <laughs> Looks like crap. What they do just leave it out in the sun? Half of it? I don't know. I think this one washed up on shore, but it does work, so that's good. All right. This is it. My complete Super Nintendo collection of games. And you even got to see the consoles. Uh, what do you think? Is there anything I'm absolutely missing here? Especially rare stuff. I love to hear about rare stuff that's really, really good. And maybe I didn't add to my collection. Also, what's your favorite part of it? Let me know in the comments down below. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in a couple days. Bye.